All right, so this morning I was chatting with an artist friend on, um, on Facebook. And uh, she was asking me to help her to help critique this mural that she's doing in, in her own yard, in her own courtyard. And I get that a lot. I get a lot of people asking me to help critique and I'm not much of a critiquer. I find critiquing to be particularly cruel and a way for the speaker to, um, to find their voice at the expense of the artist. And I, I just find it particularly cruel and it's not something I, I invest in. I invest myself in or people who uh, want some guidance in. Um, I've, I've experienced myself in, in art classes and it, it's just not, it's not helpful <laughs> other than you learn to get beaten up. It's, I guess it's like martial arts, which I did where you learn to get punched in the face a lot and eventually you don't feel it or care. But beyond that, I think what we're dealing with in this um, emporium, uh, you and I, we're not looking to beat each other up. We're not looking, no one's looking to me to come from a, you know, this high pedestal and say, well, blah, 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 and poopy on that and la, la, la. What I try to do again, what I try to do is steer people. They're, they're the captains of their own ship or they're training to be captains of their own ship. And so I try and help people steer, steer their course. That's a great analogy, by the way. Even though I don't actually know the course, it's just, okay, this is, this is what I've done. So, you know, to keep it, to keep the ship from tipping or from, you know, total Titanic explosions in life. It's just, let's, let's keep the, uh, let's keep steering steadily ahead. So that's what we were doing. And I asked her a number of different questions that I hope to help her see or anyone see their work a little bit more clearly. This was just supposed to be, I think, a fun project, but I think with any project, to keep your ship moving steadily, you really need to be able to answer a few key questions. Um, and they always, ba the, the questions are always based in, what is your intent? What do you want to say? Do you have, do you have key words that you use when you're working, whether it's a small project or a large project, do you have a mantra for large or small projects? What is that mantra? What is the feeling that you want to express? This again is just for her and her family, but she found herself stymied. She found herself stuck with these um, colors that, that um, uh, colors that were from different parts of the palette, let's say. She has one layer that, layer that has a tremendous amount of detail and texture, and then another layer on top. And that's where I think she got lost. This other layer on top using less, less um, bold colors and more pastel colors. And I'm using her as just an example because it's a, it's a, it's a path that we've all got stuck in. You know, and all of a sudden we can't figure out what to do. But I think what will help us, again, the great analogy I have uh, for the ship to help steer ourselves is coming at whatever project we have with intent, with an intent, an idea, a mantra, a sentence, a feeling. The work, as I've said many, 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 many times over the past eight years in almost 500 videos now is um, the work has to have a clear, a clear intent. I forgot what I was going to say, actually. <laughs> I lost it. Um, but it has to have, it has to have a clear, a clear meaning for you to be able to 
do more than just do a painting of or a piece of artwork of. Behind me you'll see the commission that I'm working on over here. Uh, they're not they're not done, they're not perfect, they're not done, but they're getting there. And then be, on the other side of me over my left shoulder you see Yolandi Fissure and this is when I believe it's almost finished, although looking in the camera I can see where the face could be righted a little bit more, but I also like the slightly exaggerated features and the slightly exaggerated out of proportion um, feeling of, of uh, Yolandi's face. Um, in the background on red, I have, on the red, I have written in, uh, like in light olive green, uh, the word, and again, I don't like this word, but it is Yolandi's word. Yolandi claimed it. Um, I have written faggot, faggot, faggot in the background. And it's based on uh, Yolandi's dress, uh, the faggot dress. It's really well known in the Providence, Rhode Island area. The faggot dress is actually hanging in a, in a storefront window right now. And I can't remember, it's like a Macy's level storefront. Uh, Yolandi only made this one dress, bright red, like this, but in black and white, had faggot written all over it, wore it all over town. She was so phenomenally brave. So I've included it in, in the background. And, and faggot was not the intent. Uh, it was Yolandi, it was the feeling Yolandi gave me. This boldness, this complete lack of fear in taking on the world. Um, there are several words that come to mind when I'm working on a Yolandi portrait, um, fearless is, is one of them. A lack of triteness is an idea too. There's no sweetness or cuteness or adorableness. It's always, you know, Yolandi blazing this trail with just so much courage and this you can say anything to me, I don't care. But also this feeling of I am, which is a statement that runs through most of my work. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am here, I will, I can, I do, I am. These two have other feelings behind them and I don't wanna get into it right now. I've been talking to the woman who commissioned me to do, the, to do the portraits, but I'd like to keep it a little bit private till I get further ahead on them. The couple, they are gone. They passed away over the last couple years and it's a very, um, um, it's a private and, and it's a very private feeling for both the commissioner and for me to hold in our hearts while we work our way through. So, and then I've got a, another commission also that is completely and utterly based on um, an equal balance of love and respect between a couple. I can't show you that one because the, the image is private. It's being held as a surprise. But I want to move on. I want to move on because I want to address this little doodad, my little mug, with the saying, don't dream it, be it. And I was talking to other people online about this. And it could be, you know, uh, uh, um, it could be used as a uh, nostalgic look back at the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which I have, I have a very warm place in my heart. But I think it's going to, this is going to be the saying for the year, if I remember. If I remember for more than 10 minutes, it will be, don't dream it, be it. Don't dream it, be it. And you can actually get this mug on, on T Public from another artist who I bought it from in a bunch, in a couple of stickers to Rocky Horror Pick, uh, stickers that say, don't dream it, be it. It is a declaration of who we are who, what we're reaching for in our artwork, what we want, especially in this coming year with COVID still a continuing issue and a raging issue is, is that, in the, as well, sorry, ugh, 
uh, COVID being a raging issue that has kept galleries and museums and a lot of possibilities closed. I honestly believe, I honestly feel that we can open ourselves up and create all new opportunities and possibilities for ourselves. When, as I said, I think in the last video, when society's fallen apart or cities or towns have kind of crumbled, the artists are the ones that move in. We take over the abandoned buildings. We take over the shitty places that no one wants to be in. And we make them into something. We make something new. Sadly, um, money comes in and kicks us out and they take over. Well, now it's ours. Now that you've rebuilt it. But let's, now that you've rebuilt it and made it pretty, it's gonna be ours and we're gonna take advantage of it. So move along, little artist. But right now, like in so many cities I've lived in, this, this could be our time. This could be our time to find a new path. I know we're gonna go down an allergy road again, but a new path, clear away, find new ways of presenting ourselves. I was talking to people online today and I said, I feel like I'm stabbing in the dark, uh, trying to find, uh, trying to find ways that can help not only myself, but other people. But why not? It's a level playing field. God, I'm full of analogies. It's a level playing field, or almost. We're, you know, we're not high level artists, but neither were impressionists. Neither were impressionists. They were the artists that really propelled so many other movements. So, uh, you know, with the advent of bright new colors because uh, metals were mixed into or applied to different oils. So all of a sudden we had bright new colors and we had people that were like, well, screw this. I'm, screw this, you know, doing things the old way. We're gonna do it the new way. Here we are, we've got the opportunity to do things a new way. And so let's find it. But in the saying too, this kind of ties back, this ties back to what I was saying a few minutes ago. Don't dream it, be it. Isn't only a, a declaration of who we are or a declaration of who we could be or a declaration of what we want in this cutesy, you know, cliche way. It's also a way to find the message, the intent behind the work that we're doing. How, how, how will I eventually find these people? because I, in a way, I become them. I become the subject. I don't dream about how the, how the subject should look. I become the subject. I try, I try to feel them. Feel who they are at the moment, feel who they, who they are and who they were and the effects he had on the world. The same with Yolande. You want to get a better uh, presentation? Don't dream about the image. Be the image. Be the person. So don't dream it. Be it. That's gonna. This is gonna be our clarion call for the year. Like I said, if I remember for more than five minutes, this will be our clarion call for the year. All right. So I'm Beck Lane. This is Studio 120. If you're interested in supporting Studio 120, which is wonderful that I have people that do. Um, if you're interested in supporting Studio 120, don't forget I, uh, you can provide monthly support through, through Patreon, Backline on Patreon. All the links will be posted down below. You can also send one-time tips through Cash App and PayPal, and those are so deeply appreciated. You don't even know. Um, and, uh, Let's see, what do we got? Patreon, Cash App, PayPal, TeePublic. TeePublic, where you can just purchase merchandise. Uh, images of my work, I'll I'm gonna photograph this and it'll be up too, but um, images of my work on t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, uh, travel mugs, tote bags, tote bags, um, 
phone covers, all kinds of things. It's really, really cool. And I still have gators available. You can still order gators. T Public, you can order on your own. It takes minutes, bing, bing, bing. And within a week, you've got what you've ordered. It's really great. And the quality is wonderful. If you still want gators, those nice long uh, nose to neck and beyond uh, tubes, you can contact me through Beck Lane Gators and Masks on Facebook, and I'd be happy to help you. All the links are down below. Blah, 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 blah. Time to get to work, or maybe time to shower, because I uh, haven't. haven't. I know it's a surprise, but I haven't yet. So don't forget. Okay? And ready? Let's do the Patreon jingle. Patreon! Hashtag cats. Meow, meow, meow. Hey, Punky. Hey, Punk. Punky is a little kitty that lives in North Carolina and likes my videos, by the way. So, Patreon, hashtag cats, cats, punk, punk, punk. All right, Carrie, here we go. Nyer, 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 nyer. Ciao.